This is day 6 of Advent of Cyber and today's challenge is called It's beginning to look a lot like fishing. So let's go to Try Hack Me and let's get started. Elf McBlue found an email activity while analysing log files. It looks like everything started with an email. So the learning objectives for this is learn what email analysis is and why it still matters, learn the email headers section, learn the essential questions to ask an email analysis, learn how to use email headers sections to evaluate an email, learn how to use tools to discover email attachments and conduct further analysis, help the elf team to investigate the suspicious email received. So what is email analysis? Email analysis is the process of extracting the email header information to expose the email file details. The email header contains technical details of the email sender, recipient, path, return address, and attachments. Usually, these details are enough to determine if there is something suspicious or abnormal in the email and are carried on further actions on the email, like filtering, quarantine, or delivering. This process can be done manually and with the help of tools. There are two main concerns in email analysis. So there are security issues, to do with identifying suspicious, abnormal, malicious patterns in emails, and then performance issues, identifying delivery and delay issues in emails. In this task, we'll focus on security concerns on emails, aka phishing. Before focusing on the hands-on analysis, you'll need to be familiar with the terms social engineering and phishing. Social, social engineering is the psychological manipulation of people into performing or divulging information by exploiting weaknesses in human nature. These weaknesses can be curiosity, jealousy, greed, kindness and willingness to help someone. Phishing is a subsection of social engineering delivered through email to trick someone into either revealing personal information and credentials or executing malicious code on their computer. Phishing emails will usually appear to come from a trusted source, whether that's a person or a business. They include content that tries to tempt or trick people into downloading software, opening attachments, or following links to bogus websites. You can find more about this on the Try Hack Me module right here. Does the email analysis still matter? Yes. Various academic research and technical reports highlight that phishing attacks are still extremely common, effective and difficult to detect. It is also part of penetration testing and red teaming implementations, paid security assessments that examine organizational cybersecurity. Therefore, email analysis competency is still an important skill to have. Today, various tools and technologies ease and speed up email analysis. Still, a skilled analyst should know how to conduct malware analysis when there is no budget for automated solutions. It is also a good skill for individuals and non-security slash ID people. Important note, in-depth analysis requires an isolated environment to work. It is only suggested to download and upload the received emails and attachments if you are in the authorized team and have an isolated environment. Suppose you are outside the corresponding team or a regular user. In that case, you can evaluate the email header using the raw format and conduct the essential checks like sender, recipient, spam score, and server information. Remember that you have to inform the corresponding team afterwards. How to analyze emails. Before learning how to conduct an email analysis, you need to know the structure of an email header. Let's quickly reveal the email header structure. So we have from, which is the sender's address, to, the receiver's address, including B carbon copy and blind carbon copy, date, the timestamp when the email was sent, subject, the subject of the email, return path, the return address or the reply, also known as reply to. If you reply to an email, the reply will go to the address mentioned in this field. Domain key and DKIM signatures. Email signatures are provided by email services to identify and authenticate emails. SPF shows that the server that was used to send the email, it will help to understand if the actual server is used to send the email from a specific domain. Message ID, the unique ID of the email. MIME version. It will help to understand the delivered non-text contents and attachments. X headers. The receiver mail providers usually add these fields. Provided information is usually experimental. It can be different according to the mail provider. X received. Mail service that the email went through. X spam status. The spam score of the email. And X mailer. The email client name. Important email header fields for quick analysis. Analyzing multiple head fields can be confusing at first glance, but starting from the key points will make the analysis process slightly easier. A simple process of email analysis is shown below. So do the from, to and ccc fields contain valid email addresses? If they don't, then that's a red flag. Are the from and to fields the same? Having the same sender and recipient is a red flag. Are the from and the return path fields the same? Having different values in these sections is a red flag. Was the same email sent from the correct server? Email should have come from the official mail servers of the sender. Does the message ID field exist and is it valid? Empty amount form values are red flags. Do the hyperlinks redirect to suspicious slash abnormal sites? Suspicious links and, and redirections are red flags. And do the attachments consist of or contain malware? So suspicious attachments are red flags and file hashes marked as suspicious or malicious by sandboxes are a red flag. You also need an email header parser tool or configure a text editor to highlight and spot the email header's details easily. The difference between the raw and parse views of the emails are shown below. 
So you can see on the right one it's clearly highlighting the field type and then the white characters are the field values. So this example is using Sublime Text to view the email files without opening and executing any of the linked attachments commands. You can view email files in text editors using two approaches. You can right click on a sample and then open with Sublime Text or you can open Sublime Text and then drag and drop the file into it. If your file ha has a .eml or .msg extension, Sublime Text will automatically detect the structure and highlight the header fields for ease of readability. Note that if you're using TXT or any other extension, you'll need to manually select the highlight format by using the button located in the bottom right. So in Sublime Text, bottom right there will be plain text, which is what Sublime Text has detected the files being. You'll then need to change it from plain text to email header. Text editors are helpful in analysis, but there are some tools that can help you view the email details in a clearer format. In this task, we will use the e EML Analyzer tool to view the body of the email and analyze the attachments. The EML Analyzer is a tool designed to pass email headers for a better view and analyze process. The tool is ready to go in the given VM. The tool can show the headers, body, embedded URLs, plain text, and HTML data and attachments. The sample usage query is explained below. So when you use the I flag, you then pass in the path to that file. If you do dash dash header, that will show the headers. If you use dash u flag, it will show URLs. If you do dash dash text, it will show the clear text data. And if you do dash dash extract dash all, it will extract all attachments from the email. So this is a sample below. So you can see email analyzer dash i. It's going to open up this email and it's including all the information specified. And you can see it's got all the information here except most of it has been redacted. So at this point you should have completed the following checks. Sender and recipient controls, return path control, email sender control, message ID control, spam value control, attachment control. Additionally, you can use some OSINT tools to check email reputation and enrich the findings. Visit the given site below and do a reputation check on the sender address. So here if you find any suspicious URLs and IP addresses, consider using some OSINT tool for further investigation. While we focus on using VirusTotal and Inquest, Having similar and alternative searches in the analyst toolbox is worthwhile and advantageous. So here's a variety of different tools they can use. So VirusTotal is a cloud-based detection tool set and sandbox environment. Inquest provides network and file analysis using threat analytics. IPInfo.io provides detailed information about IP addresses. Talos Reputation, also IP Reputation. URLScan.io analyzes websites for stimulating regular user behavior. Browserling is a browser sandbox and so is, and one of browsers also is browser sandbox. So after completing the mentioned initial checks, you can continue with the body and attachment analysis. Now let's focus on analyzing the email body and attachments. The sample doesn't have URLs or an attachment. You need to compute the value of the file to conduct file-based reputation checks and further your analysis. As shown below, you can use SHA-256SUM tool to calculate the file's hash value. So once you get the hash of the file, you can go to VirusTotal and enter that hash in. So when you enter it in, you'll have these tabs below. You can go to the behavior tab and analyze the details of the behavior of the file that produced the hash. So after that, continue on reputation check on inquest to enrich the gather data. So it's got the steps here. When you go to the website, you go indicate lookup, you enter the hash in, and then you can select the file and view the information it has for it. After finishing the same steps, you are finished initial email analysis. Next steps are creating a report of findings and informing the team members manager in the appropriate format. Now is the time to put what we've learned into practice. Click on our start machine button at the top to launch a virtual machine. The machine will start on a split screen view. So yep, let me just quickly get that virtual machine back up. Okay, so here is the virtual machine. So what is the email address of the sender? So we've got the email here. Let's just, let's open Sublime Text and we will click and drag the email into here. So the sender was chief.elf at santaclaus.thm. So if we copy that and paste that into here, if you were to receive this email, it looked like it came from the chief elf from Santa Claus. But if you then go to the return address, you can see it's murphy.evident at bandityeti.thm. So for a phishing attack, it looks like it's come from a legitimate source, but if you were to reply to it, you can see it's going to the, the bad actor. So on whose behalf was the email sent? So the sender just was chief elf. So they're pretending that they're the chief elf when they sent this email. Uh, what is the X spam score? So it has a score of three, as you can see right here. What is the hidden value of the message dash ID field? Okay, so this is the value here. This looks like a base 64. 
So let's see if we can convert that base 64 to text. So let's put the base 64 here and let's decode. And we can see AUC 2022 email analysis. The way that I knew it was base 64 was it's using alphanumeric values, but then it ends with an equal sign, which is which is a good indicator to know that it's base 64. So put that value into here. Oh, sorry, I copied the wrong thing. Copy this and put that into here. There we go. So visit the email reputation check website provided in the task. What is the reputation result on the email sender? So let's find where that website was. So it's https emailrep.io and we will put in the bandit yeti email address. So let's paste that into here, search, and it's come back as risky. So if we type in that it was risky, that is correct. So check the attachments. What is the file name of the attachment? So somewhere in here, it will have a file, ah, right here. So division of labor load share plan dot doc. So paste that into here. What is the hash value of the attachment? So for this, we will need to go to the terminal and we will need to use EML analyzer to extract the attachment from it. So let's see, what directory are we in? Do we have the file here? Okay, let's go to our desktop. And we can see that the email is on the desktop, so it will be eml analyzer-i urgent, and we will do extract all. So if we do ls again, we now have a directory called eml attachments. So if we cd into there, and let's do another ls. Okay, we've got the file, the attachment here now. So let's do shard 256 sum, and then the file name. And we now have the char256 of that file. So copy that and we will go back down here and paste it in. So now we need to visit virus total. And in here, if you go to search, you can paste in the file hash and let's see what it says about it. So as you can see, 35 security vendors have flagged as being malicious. So what is it? So visit virus total website, search, navigate to behavior section. What is the second tactic marked in the MITRE attack section? Okay, MITRE attack section says defense evasion. Yep, that looks like it's correct. So defense evasion. Oops, did I spell that incorrectly? There we go. American spelling of defense. Okay, so now visit the inquest website and use the hash value to search. What is the subcategory of the file? And we'll go to the website here. Indicate lookup and we'll paste that hash in. We'll go to that file, and what did it want us to find? It want us to find the subcategory of the file. So the subcategory is Macro Hunter. So we can paste that in. So if you're wanting to learn more about phishing, TryHackMe has a module on phishing at slash module slash phishing. That is day six now completed of TryHackMe's advent of cyber. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos for this advent of cyber 2022.